very nice. It's left keeping a painter employed. Well, the new album, Hail to the Thief, uh, and uh, that's apparently a happy album, a very colorful. It is. It is, yes. With lots of colors and everything. So what's happy about the new album, Tom? Only the music. Only the music? Yeah. Not the words? Definitely uh? not the words. No? <laughs> they're <laughs> still a little bit dark, Definitely maybe? The yes, they're, yeah. they're pretty dark. I mean, they kind of weren't supposed to be, but um, it uh, sort of just happened that way, really. It just happens? Your lyrics are always dark, or...? Uh, no, I mean, no. I guess there's some, there's some joy in the record, actually. Sail to the Moon is pretty joyful. Mm -hmm. There are, there are bits and pieces, but I think, uh, all the, all the good energy comes from the music. And, um, the lyrics kind of just happen despite me, really. Are they as important as the music? The sound of them is important. And the album was supposed to be called, uh, The Gloaming. Yeah. Uh, why, why did you change um, the title? Because it didn't really fit the music. Uh, I mean, but at the same time, it it uh, all the way through making the record, I had a very strong sense of um, unease and dread. And gloaming in, um, is an old an old English term for twilight. Which it is used a beautiful to be, part of the day. Yeah, and um, where I live, uh, it's especially beautiful. And all these colours here are in it. See? In the sky. Yeah. And they all sort of seem to happen, and uh, the general atmosphere, um, animals run for cover, and it's, uh, it's a very, th there's just something, it's stuck in my head, and I couldn't get it out, so it was a very important part of the record, but in the end, you know, we wanted something bright and shiny and, and um, nonsense in a way. It makes sense. See? Okay. The album's title, what does it refer to, Hail to the Thief? Because it is not to the uh, President of the United States, huh? It's not... Uh, not entirely. No, but no. in part, uh, I heard it was rather John Adams in 1888 who said I, that. I think, I'm not sure, but I really should read up about that. But the, there was, um, <laughs> there was uh, basically, the, it did happen before, and the time before, he was referred to as the thief, because he stole the election because his father bought it for him. Um, and when... Hello! That'll be someone after me. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yes. <laughs> well, I, there's not That's much super. I can say. I mean, that was, there was a particular moment and, um, when, when he got in uh, and uh, the British news ran a story about how possibly the election had been rigged. And um, to me, that was the, start that, that was the starting point than the reference point all the way through the record because uh, I believe that we had entered the the realm of the absurd and the, the deeply crazy. Hence, mm -hmm. this. Yeah. This to me is absurd and deeply crazy. And uh, uh, that's, yeah, it d I explain it a different way every day of the week, really. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think governments, the press, lie to the public? It's a big, like a Hollywood movie. Uh. Um, well, there is a thing that once, once it's kind of like in Britain with with the royal family. Once, once you uh, uh, in inaugurated whatever, people stop questioning, and that's the end of it. Um, but uh, what's worrying is what worries me is the people that so um, that um, are behind uh, supplying the money the lobby groups, the drug companies, the oil companies. Um, and I, I really don't think that, that, generally speaking, it's not just in America, it's in Britain, in Europe, here, no doubt as well, that uh, people generally do not have access to the governments as they should. Um, it's not, it ceased to be a democracy mm -hmm. because uh, corporate power can pay an awful lot more money to get a lot nearer than you or I can. And so, I mean, that's another reason why it's held to the thief, because I think our right to protest or say anything about our lives has been denied us now. But that's just me. Mm. <coughs>
I think we should. Um, but the but the but the upside of it is that people are much more, um, much more willing to take to the streets now. Uh, during making this record, I went to to two protests, one in San Francisco and one in LA against the the war in Iraq, and mm -hmm. it amazed me There's how something how happening. energetic it was. But but the fact but but everybody here knows that when you watch Fox or CNN or whatever, they cut it all out, so it's like it never happened. But you if you if you're at that protest, you know it happened. Yeah, you, ha you, ha you have different news, I think, in Europe than we do here. With the yeah, but uh, even yeah. then, it's pretty bad. I yeah? mean, the main mainstream news is all owned by. I thought one you had more point of views, maybe. Yeah, it's it's better. Yeah. But, um, you'd be surprised. It's not. It's not indiemedia.org. I've heard that you'd like to be a prime minister. Oh, that well, it's easy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, it, Ed made a very good point because uh, at one point we actually were going to call the record uh, "Vote for Me," yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but Ed made a good point that the only way that we'd actually get in is to actually uh, kiss corporate ass, which would actually be quite difficult to do. I mean, we might be able to get the record companies to stump up some money, but I don't think it would be the equivalent of Glaxo, uh -huh. Smith Klein, or anybody like that. Sorry. Uh, Tom, I have a few questions for you. You were talking about Hail to the Thief, and uh, I, I get the impression that you're sort of denouncing, I guess, the abuse of power. Uh, that's Very being, much. Yeah, that's being perpetrated by, by individuals who seem to uh, speak t to justify their actions because, you know, they say it's in the name of justice or democracy or things like that. Yeah. And uh, do you feel, as your lyrics suggest, that you're sort of between feeling, I guess, like a helpless uh, witness and also, you know, having this urge to rise up to authority? Um, I, th I think that... Uh, I think that, that um, I got involved in the Jubilee 2000 thing quite heavily at one point um, and um, I, I encountered a lot of... of um, trying to deal with, with governments and trying to persuade them to do things that are in the interest of millions of people who are dying you know and and it, it it was a very weird time for me because i didn't consider to to uh, cancelling debts um to be anything other than a humanitarian issue um but as i got into it i discovered the history of the situation and the fact that the west is really basically trying to keep the rest of the world down in or in order to keep the system running they need to get cheap resources cheap labor and enslave the rest of the world um and you know, after a while of banging on about it um, in newspapers and, and, and on TV, I just discovered that actually um, mainstream media were just chopping it up and taking whatever they wanted and not getting to the central issue. They'd always chop it out. Um, and it really annoyed me and really frustrated me. And I really admired Bono sort of for carrying on doing the stuff in Africa. But to me, it just totally fused my head. I could not cope with the the sense of frustration and the fact that people... You know, politicians felt that they had to talk to you because you had like millions of votes in a sack. You turn up and you give them to them, like, ah, we better sort of talk to these people. Not only are they vaguely well known, but they actually have millions of signatures from old grannies and all around the world. And oh, mm. but but basically, th they weren't doing anything about it. Um, so I went through a long period of sort of switching off from that and trying to get away from it, and um, uh, found that. Um, Although, as you say, a lot of the record is about trying to switch off and trying to just say to yourself, you're never going to be able to do anything about it or whatever. Um, actually, the underlying theme throughout it is, is, is pure blind anger. Um, uh, the, the, very, the very feeling that makes you actually take to the streets or whatever. Um, even though I was trying to deny it, I think that's kind of, kind of what is there, really. I mean, you know, most people don't give a shit. They ain't got time. Unfortunately for me, I have time. 